and the last few weeks we have seen dozens of YouTubers either quit. It's not clickbait. I made the decision to quit. I'm no longer going to be making these videos. I'm quitting YouTube. Retire. I'm about to take the hardest decision of my life. I'm, I don't want to be on this platform anymore. Or go on indefinite hiatus. This isn't the standard YouTuber burnout apology video. That maybe my time on camera was coming to an end. The great resignation. We've lost Matt Pat from The Game Theorists, who had 18.4 million subscribers. Tom Scott, who had just over 6 million subscribers, announced that after 10 years of making educational videos, he was done. Now it's time to take a breather. I can't keep this up. And Captain Sparkles, who's been going for a I think 13 years with 11 million subscribers is retiring. So why now and why all at the same time or within the space of like a couple of weeks? Then I guess prompts the question of like, why? Why am I doing this now? Why am I making this announcement today? Why am I walking away from the channels? Well, I've listed out the key culprits from each person's video so that we can kind of get an idea of why this is happening. Burnout. Most YouTubers post every single week, sometimes two or three times a week. But the rule I set myself was Monday, Monday, 4 p.m., something interesting. One of the core problems with YouTube and most of the social media platforms is that you have to constantly feed it content if you want to grow. 246 weeks since then, I didn't stop. Every week I've put out something, I've made something. If you stop making content on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, then the algorithm will just kind of stop favoring you. It'll stop giving you love. For the past 10 years of my life, there has not been a single vacation where I was not working. So a lot of creators get in this constant grind to make content all the time. There's been a video a week for 10 years. I never broke the streak. And I don't think it's a good thing. I think it actually robs them of creativity. I don't get any satisfaction from the type of work that I do here. And I think this is what keeps happening to these YouTubers is they, they pick a niche and they just go fully into it. So it becomes stale for them. They get sick of it. Quality standards are up. If you've been a fan of YouTube for say the last 10 years, like I have, you would have noticed the massive change in the YouTube playground. If you don't know what YouTube was like 10 years ago, well, it used to be quite lo-fi. What I mean by that is that, you know, you'd have any creator like me could just set up a webcam, make a couple videos and, you know, edit it just a little bit and potentially do really well, you know, really blow up. Anyone out there make fun of Brittany after all she's been through. But over the last several years, that's changed quite drastically. I actually think if we go all the way back and we look at Casey Neistat and his daily vlogs which were amazing they're still if you haven't watched them go check them out Casey Neistat what he did was he he brought like proper photography skill and editing to vlogs what that did long term is it meant that all of the quality of videos had to improve and be more polished and professional if you upload a video from your webcam now you might get some views but you're not gonna blow up I seriously doubt it my own standards became higher and higher to keep pace with all the people I was collaborating with and competing with. The Casey effect means that everyone's quality had to get better. You have to cut out all the gaps in your breathing, you need multiple camera angles, you know, all these kind of things started to become the norm. And it's not like I can drop the quality back down. That's not how YouTube works these days. The other thing, and we'll get into this a bit later, but Mr. Beast has had a profound impact on YouTube. And it's called Mr. Beastification. Basically, what Jimmy did is by having a team and sort of upping the ante of his videos every time. I'm gonna spend the next 50 hours buried alive in this coffin. Suddenly these single creators, like myself, we couldn't keep up. And so anyone that wanted to grow had to start building a team around around them. I was able to hire people full time, a crew to help me make these videos. And all of a sudden, it's not just some lo-fi YouTube video. It's a video that has, you know, like the budget of a TV show and the same production standards. And now most of the big creators on YouTube aren't just one person. They might appear as one person, but they've got a whole team behind them, editing their content, scripting it, making the best thumbnails. We've been staffing up so much. That's why we partnered with a larger company to help run the channels. That's YouTube has become a business. Mr. Beastification is basically, if you look at Mr. Beast's thumbnails, everybody copies them, right? Everybody does the Mr. Beast style, but they also kind of copy his video style as well. And even just the core idea of his videos. Imagine if you spent a whole
whole bunch of time writing a school report and you got a B and you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm happy with a B. But then a friend of yours saw your report and they took it and then they got a couple other people to help them and they made a report that got an A+. You'd probably be pretty miffed, right? Pretty annoyed that you're the one that actually spent all that time developing the idea. But then someone else came and took it and they, they got an A+, from it. That's kind of what's happened with YouTube. So what we see is these big creators are stealing ideas from the small creators that have done well and they're just sort of replicating the exact video but they're just putting money behind it. They're turning it up. So small creators can't keep up but then big creators steal from other big creators and it's this vicious cycle where everyone's kind of stealing from each other and I don't actually think it's a good thing. I think it's making YouTube feel stale you know i've seen like so many alternates of the same type of video that it's like I don't know, I'm getting a bit of fatigue, you know? I think a lot of creators make videos that doesn't actually resonate with them, but they know it's gonna do well, so they spend the time and energy doing it. And that is a very quick way to burn out and just not enjoy the process. All you people want is more, 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 more! Leave her alone! Greener pastures. This is probably the only positive point I'm gonna make, but a lot of creators have just found better ways to make money or better opportunities than their YouTube channel. Like Joel Haver is now gonna start working on feature films. So for him, that's a way better creative decision than doing his YouTube channel. Or Casey Neistat, who kind of kicked this whole thing off, has admitted on Diary of a CEO that, you know, he's just done working hard. I'm doing fuck all right now, I'm doing nothing. He's just gonna chill out and enjoy time with his kids. But I'm mostly just riding the momentum that I created years ago. I just go home, play with my kids every day. It's my favorite thing. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's actually a really good reason to retire and to just spend time with your family and enjoy it. So what do you think? Are you going to miss your favorite creators? Is YouTube going downhill? Or is this the beginning of a new era that you're going to capitalize on? Personally, I'm really excited. I think there's a whole bunch of opportunity right now. If you do want to seize on that opportunity, make sure you watch this video about how I grew from 1,000 to 50. 50,000 followers on Instagram in a very short amount of time. But otherwise, make sure you subscribe and kakite. I'll see you next time.